In Numbers 31, Moses tells the Israelites to commit genocide. The Israelites are returning from battling the Midianites, and the Bible says that Moses was angry. So in Moses' anger, he tells the Israelites they need to go back and they need to unalive the men, the women, the children, and to take the young girls who have not had relations with anybody in the land and take the young girls as slaves for themselves. But that actually didn't happen. See, due to textual criticism, due to a field study in the Bible where scholars criticize the text of the Bible, we now know that Moses never actually said those words. We now know that Numbers 31, 14 was actually redacted or edited. So the original text of Numbers 31 actually is about how Moses is next to the priest Eleazar. And when the Israelites come back from their battle with the Midianites, Moses actually just gives the Israelites holiness laws about purifying themselves before they come back into the camp of the Israelites. Numbers 31 would be associated with what is called the priestly source. The priestly source is a group of priests who would have wrote the text down. We know from texts like 2 Chronicles 34, 13, that Levites had a job of keeping records and writing down certain things. And the things that Levitical priests would have been concerned about writing down would be priestly things. So a priest would be concerned with writing about genealogies, priestly functions, and purity laws. So when we look at certain texts in the Bible that are concerned around genealogies, priestly laws, and purity laws, we can associate that with what's called the priestly source. Within the text of Leviticus are something called the holiness codes. The holiness codes in Leviticus are distinct from any other text in the Hebrew Bible because the holiness codes deal with how to remain ritually pure. And if you are not ritually pure, there are severe divine consequences for being ritually unclean. The holiness codes go from Leviticus chapter 17 all the way to Leviticus chapter 26. And look at how Leviticus 26 reads. I will bring the sore on you to avenge the breaking of the covenant. When you withdraw into your cities, I will send a plague among you and you will be given into enemy hands. When I cut off your supply of bread, 10 women will be able to bake your bread in one oven and they will dole out the bread by weight. You will eat, but you will not be satisfied. I will lay waste the land so that your enemies who live there will be appalled. I will scatter you among the nations and will draw out my sword and pursue you. Your land will be laid waste and your cities will lie in ruins. So in Numbers 31, 13, you have this scene where the Israelites are coming back from warring with the Midianites. And the verse starts off and says, Moses and Eleazar, the priest and all the chief of the congregation, went to meet them outside the camp. And Moses was angry with the officers of the army, the commanders of thousands and the commander of hundreds who had come from service in the war. Moses said to them, now notice in verse 13 that it is expressed that Moses didn't just go to the outside of the camp, but Moses and Eleazar the priest went outside to meet the Israelite outside of the camp. So notice how it is expressed and it's important that Moses is with a priest because the person who wrote this down, they were concerned with priestly things. So this would be considered the priestly source. Now, when you get to verse 15, there's a switch from priestly language and priestly concerns and the language switches from priestly language to holiness called divine justice language that's found in Leviticus. Moses said to them, have you let all the women live? Behold, these on Balaam's advice caused the people of Israel to act treacherously against the Lord in the incident of Peor. 
And so the plague came among the congregation of the Lord. Now, therefore, kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman who has known by lying with him. But all the young girls who have not known man by lying with him, keep alive for yourselves. So you notice how Moses goes on this divine holiness justice rant. And when you get to verse 19, you get and camp outside the camp seven days. Whoever of you has killed any person and whoever has touched any slain, purify yourselves and your captives on the third day and on the seventh day. So Moses goes on this rant about divine justice, the same type of divine justice that you see only found in Leviticus chapter 17 to 26. And then Moses's language switches from divine holiness code to purity laws. So what it looks like is when Moses starts speaking in verse 15, somebody actually went into the text and added those words to Moses's lips. And they added those words and combined them with Moses's original words that actually start in verse 19. So as far as the slaughter of the Midianites, Moses actually never commanded that. That event actually never happened. And for Christians, that is actually a very good thing. What Moses commanded the Israelites to do when they came back from battle is to simply encamp outside of the camp and get themselves ritualistically, purely right. And that is actually what Moses actually said. There's many other war texts and conquest texts in the Bible that are edited. What this actually shows is God may not have actually commanded the Israelites to do a lot of the heinous acts that people think God commanded them to do. That is actually the editor who's actually going back into the text, editing the text hundreds of years later, and then combining the edited text with the original text back together again, weaving these two texts together seamlessly, even though these two texts at times may contradict each other. So that is actually to say that a lot of the texts where God or a prophet of God or a high leader of God is telling the Israelites to make peace with the people of the land and make covenants with the people of the land, that actually may be legitimate, while a lot of the different war texts and the conquest texts and the genocide texts are actually the redactions. So based off of textual criticism and the academic evidence, we could actually say that for a lot of the war texts and the heinous acts in the Bible, God actually never commanded that. That is actually the editing of an author. My name is Wayne, and I'm a scholar of the Hebrew Bible. And if you want to learn more about this information, you need to get my books by going to the link in my profile by getting my books, Secrets of the Bible from the East. I have three books that come in a bundle where I talk about more of this information with citations and bibliographies from other academics in the field. If you want to learn more, you need to get my books in my profile. And with that, good luck and good night.